Hey everybody, welcome to ARE Live. I'm Mark Tier, the founder of Black Spectacles. And during the webinar today, we're gonna give you a taste of what our virtual workshops are like by going over some of the group exercises which focus on practice management, that particular division. Virtual workshops are pretty new. I should say, I didn't say that very well. Virtual workshops are pretty new, so let me tell you a little bit about them. So what we do is for two hours every Sunday, we've organized group sessions that are led by licensed architects. Uh, like Paul, uh, who recently passed the ARE. And then during these sessions, the instructor administers a couple of lessons that are targeted to the most difficult topics on the test. Then you get to work on the lessons in a group setting uh, and get feedback from the group. And then at the end, uh, we always leave some, a little bit of time for Q&A so you can be sure to get your, uh, you know, your questions answered. Uh, so if you don't have virtual workshops in your membership with Black Spectacles, uh, you can upgrade to our expert subscription, which is actually the only place where you can get uh, virtual workshops, uh, and, and that will give you access to them every Sunday. So uh, moving on, though, I uh, want to comment briefly on what's going on at Prometric and with the test in general. So it's uh, today is uh, November 12th, 2020. Uh, the testing centers are currently open, but with reduced capacity, which means that there just aren't as many seats as usual. So we just wanna encourage you to register for your exam as soon as possible so you can be sure that you get a seat when you want one. Uh, and uh, the really exciting news is that NCARB has announced that starting on uh, December 14th, 2020, you can register to take the ARE online, which means you don't have to go into the testing center at all. They did, you know, there was a, an earlier date that they had previously announced, but they pushed it back to December 14th, 2020. So, um, so I think that's a really great advancement. There's actually no changes to the content or to the division structure. Um, they just, uh, I think they reduced the, uh, the test uh, duration a little bit. Um, and I think there's actually a, a couple fewer questions. Other than that, it's basically the same test. Um, and you know, if this isn't your cup of tea, you can still take the, you know, the exam in person if you want. So we just posted the link in the chat here in GoToWebinar for you to visit NCARB site for all the details, just to make sure you're up to date with everything. Uh, but wanted to mention that to you guys. Uh, for those of you who are joining us here for the first time on ARE Live, Black Spectacles is the first ever NCARB approved test prep provider for all six of the ARE divisions. Uh, we offer comprehensive test prep for the ARE with video lectures, practice exams, flashcards, and of course, uh, virtual workshops. And it's all available online with memberships available for either individual architects or firms or schools or AI chapters to read a little bit uh, about our individual memberships and see what kind of materials we offer, you can go to blackspectacles.com uh, and we just shared a link uh, about that. If you're in a firm and you'd like to learn a little bit more about how you can get your whole firm on a membership and have your boss pay for, uh, for access, you, we're actually hosting a webinar uh, about firm memberships on November 19th at uh, 12 p.m. Central. Uh, and so we're sharing a link about that too. It'll be great, you'll be able to get a little bit of information about that. Um, and uh, figure out how to, uh, you know, if it makes sense for, you know, for your office. At our next ARE Live broadcast, which will be on December 17th, this is going to be an awesome one, uh, like today, but a little bit different, actually, in that we're speaking with a learning expert. So, uh, and, and she's going to be uh, talking about the best study tactics and strategies to help you pass the ARE. Um, uh, Dawn is, uh, we've worked with her for a while. She's absolutely an expert in you know, how learning works, um, and also how, how um, organizations like NCARB craft the ARE, uh, which is really, if you have that kind of knowledge, it really helps you as you're, as you're sort of navigating the test. Um, so I think it's gonna be really a, a wonderful session, which you can register if you go to uh, blackspectacle.com slash podcast, uh, and you'll find a link there as well. We're having a giveaway today. Uh, we're gonna be e engaging exclusively on our, on our online, ARE community. Um, so head over to that thread. I just typed in community.blackspectacles.com and then click on ARE Live. And we pinned uh, today's uh, discussion at the top. It says ARE Live PCM Virtual Workshop Exercise. And um, let's see, we're going to be giving away, uh, let's see, for everyone who posts in our thread today, this thread that I just mentioned, uh, you'll be eligible to win a free Black Spectacles t shirt. So all you have to do is go over there and just say hi in that thread. Uh, but of course, 
the real reason it's here is, you know, uh, as a vehicle for you to ask questions. So we're manning this uh, and, and happy to answer any questions that you guys might have here. Um, so, of course, uh, do that if you like, and then, uh, you know, stay tuned until the end to see if you won the free t-shirt. Um, and then lastly, uh, today we have a special discount on Black Spectacles individual memberships to share and help you along in your journey. So we'll provide that coupon code at the end of the show. So stick around for that. Now, our uh, distinguished guest today is Paul Mosher. He's a project manager and registered architect in North Carolina for Cluck Design Collaborative, which is a small firm that focuses on commercial and mixed use development renovations and, a new, and new construction projects. Before being hired by uh, Cluck Design in 2017, he studied at Clemson University, Go Tigers, uh, where he and his colleagues were awarded the first patent in the history of Clemson's College of Architecture, which is pretty amazing. He's done a lot of work with Black Spectacles since uh, 2019, um, has worked with multiple groups in our, uh, our former group coaching program, and he helped uh, to develop uh, a number of the exercises for our virtual workshops, as well as leading them. Uh, so that's a little bit about Paul. Paul, welcome to ARE Live, and with that, I'll hand it over to you. Hey, thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, and also I, I want to mention that um, I actually got one of those Black Spectacles t-shirts. Woo! <laughs> just like that, and I still wear it today. So, um, That's funny. Yeah, it's a great t-shirt. Um, yeah, so welcome, everybody. Um, thanks for that introduction, Mark. Today we're going to be going over um, firm financial metrics and uh, just sort of the basic internal um, metrics that you need to cover, you need to know for this ARE um, practice management. And this comes directly from the ARE 5.0 handbook, um, objective 2.1, evaluate the financial well-being of the practice. And um, the ARE 5.0 handbook, I always encourage candidates to constantly be going back and looking at that ARE 5.0 handbook to make sure that they're on track studying what they need to study. Um, also, I believe that it was just recently updated, um, the ARE 5.0 handbook in maybe last month. Mark, do you know? Um, yeah, I think so. It was, it was updated last month. Right. So uh, I don't believe anything in practice management changed, but just as a heads up to uh, go and re-download that if uh, you might have the one from July when it was updated um, prior to this past update. Um, so anyway, I guess uh, we can jump right into it. Is that right? Yeah, have at it, man. All right, great. Um, so throughout this exercise today, uh, we have this um, basic firm that we are going to be figuring out, you know, uh, how how is their utilization rate going? Um, what's their overhead rate? Talking about direct labor. So this is our basic um, firm. So we have a principal making 100,000, a project architect at 75, two architects in training at 50, and administrative staff making 30,000, um, general office expenses of $92,000 a year, and then additional indirect expenses of $198,750 a year. Um, and then where you see build hours, uh, that is hours that were billed specifically to a project. Uh, so it's hours that um, once they were billed, you know, brought money back into the firm. Um, and then we can also assume that every person worked 2,080 hours each year, uh, which is just 52 weeks times 40. All right, so um, here we get into calculating the utilization rate for each member of the firm. Uh, so the utilization rate is basically a number uh, that shows as a as a decimal the percentage of time that um, any individual employee is billing out to um, a project that is making the firm money. So when we're calculating that, it's it's just the uh, build hours times the total hours, uh, or excuse me, the build hours divided by the total hours worked in the year. So let me. Uh, Get my notes working here. Um, bear with me one moment. Right, so 1500 or divided by 2000 
80 um, is going to be 0 0.72. Um, so the principal has a utilization rate of 0 0.72 for the year. Um, likewise, if we go down the list, the project architect, um, if you take 1800 divided by 2080, you get 0 0.87. Uh, and then the architects and training each have a utilization rate of 0.85. And then lastly, the administrative staff has a utilization rate of 0.06 um, because most of their work is going to be internal. Um, the utilization rate is really looking at the hours that are billed out. Um, so if you're following along with us, um, that would be for calculate the utilization rate of each member of the firm, that would be B um, in the uh, uh, what would you call that, Mark B? The the piece that you posted in the ARE live um, in the forum. The, uh, the the question, I'm sorry? The question, sorry, the- um, Yeah, the mock exam? The mock exam, yeah. So it'd be yeah. for number one, that's B, principal 0 0.72, 0 0.87, 0 0.85, 0 0.85, and 0 0.06. Nice. All right. So, um, this utilization rate, um, what is this utilization rate used for? Um, so does it help a manager understand who is currently being underutilized for billable work? Um, it will help a manager set the billable rate of a worker. C, a manager can calculate the direct labor costs to the firm for each worker with the utilization rate. Um, or D answers A and C. Um, so the answer here is going to be D. And uh, so the utilization rate, if you look at, if you have a spreadsheet of all of the utilization rates within the company, um, anybody who has a low utilization rate, as long as they're not um, you know, administrative staff or someone that's mostly working internally, if it's somebody that's billing out most of their time and they have a low utilization rate, it usually means that they can take on another project because at the moment um, they don't have a lot on their plate and uh, they they have time for more. Um, and then at C, because uh, with the utilization rate, um, the manager is going to be able to understand what the direct labor cost for each individual employee is for the firm. Um, which we'll get into on question number three. And the reason that it's not question B, uh, it will help a manager set the billable rate of a worker. So um, billable rates have uh, a whole bunch of pieces. There are a whole bunch of pieces that go into how you set a billable rate, um, how you set an hourly rate. And so you're not only covering um, you know, the cost of the worker, but you're also covering the cost of the rent and you're looking at what your profit um, that you're trying to make is. And so uh, A and C are the best answers, um, which is why the correct answer is D and B is just not quite, um, it doesn't have quite enough information there for it to be the correct answer. All right, so moving on to um, number three. So calculate the utilization rate for the entire firm. So again, um, utilization rate is the total direct labor hours divided by the total labor hours. And so um, here, this 10,400, this is simply all of these uh, added up, 2,080 times five is 10,400. And then we add up all of the build hours and we get 6,968, and when you divide 6,968 by 10,400, you get 0.67. Um, so the answer number three is 0.67. Paul, one question for you, uh, maybe sure. from the group, is um, that 2080? Uh, there's a you know uh, a little a fuzziness about where the tw 2080 number came from. Can you just explain that to folks? Sure. Um, so the 2080, um, we're assuming here that we're working 40 hour 
work week, so standard work week, and then we're working 52 weeks a year. So um, even though hopefully we're getting some vacation there, uh, we're going to go ahead and assume that it's paid vacation. So the firm is going to look at um, the hours in the year as 2,080, 52 times 40. Awesome. Thanks, man. You bet. All right. So um, number four, an employee's low utilization rate might be indicative of which of the following. The employee hasn't been working with the firm very long. B, the employee could take on another project. C, the employee is completing multiple CA, CA hours, construction administration hours every week. Or D, the employee doesn't work well with other employees. So um, in this case, the answer is going to be B, the employee could take on another project. Um, so a low utilization rate, uh, in the case of A, it is not A because um, the utilization rate isn't looking at a total um, amount of hours worked. So even if you had a new employee who had only worked maybe 100 hours, so just over two weeks, um, it, they could still have a very high utilization rate because within those 100 hours, maybe they they were billable for um, 90, and so their utilization rate would be 0.9. So um, has nothing to do with the total hours amount work amount of hours worked. It has more to do with the um, percentage of those hours worked that are billed out, or that the employee was making the firm money. Um, C, the employee is completing multiple CA hours every week. Hopefully that construction administration uh, is going to be billable um, and included within the, the compensation for the architect. So um, it's not C. And then D, the employee doesn't work well with other employees. Um, that, right, there's just no way to know uh, by looking at the utilization rate, whether or not they work well with other employees. So again, um, the answer here is B the employee could take on another project. Quick question for you here. Um, sure. Uh, Paul, uh, question is, uh, over on the community, <clears throat> does that mean, and again, this maybe backs up uh, a little bit before this, but uh, there's a question about billable rate. And so mm -hmm. does, does that mean that billable rate is typically more than direct labor cost per hour? I'm sure if that makes sense. Uh, so, right. So, um, direct labor and uh that is that's kind of where we're going here so calculating direct labor so direct labor um is an internal number so these are numbers where we're talking about the cost of things to the firm so not how much money they're charging the client for work completed but how much it actually costs internally so with direct labor you're looking at um okay this Principal is making $100,000 a year. Um, the cost of direct labor is going to be how much the firm paid, or what, I guess, uh, what percentage did the firm pay of that $100,000 salary where the mm -hmm. principal was working on something that's actually going to um, bring money back into the firm. So when you're talking about a billable rate, um, the direct labor, the cost of um, paying someone to make you money, essentially, which is what the direct labor cost is. Um, with the billable rate, you have to cover the cost of that direct labor, and you have to cover the cost of the rent um, of your office and the cost of computers, um, the cost of supporting staff, cost of coffee, uh, if your firm <laughs> or tea, my firm <laughs> made a decision to get rid of the coffee maker um, when I actually wasn't there that day, or I probably would have voted <laughs> no. But um, That's anyway, so the cost of coffee, you know, things like that are all going to be covered under that billable rate. Um, so I think we should circle back to billable rates, I think, after um, maybe the next couple of questions when we have Perfect. more down about direct labor and indirect labor. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. Good. Uh, yeah, you bet. So calculate the direct labor costs for the year. Um, so this is the direct labor cost 
to the firm for the entire year for everybody working. Um, so first we need to figure out how much uh, in direct labor did the firm pay each individual employee. So we're going to multiply um, their salary, we're going to multiply it by the utilization rate. And then that is going to give us the direct labor cost to the firm. So um, here we have 100,000 times 0.72. Um, and I will say uh, 0.72, these are all rounded um, to the nearest uh, tenth or hundredth um, place. And so these numbers that I'm about to put down for direct labor, uh, I know that they're going to seem a little crazy, but it's because we made this in Excel, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, which of course doesn't um, round numbers and then multiply them together. So the actual the actual utilization rate of 1500 divided by 2080 is going to be 0.723865 or something like that. So um, anyway, that's why when I write down this direct labor number of um, 72,115, dollars and 38 cents um that's why it's not just seventy two thousand dollars because 0.72 times a hundred thousand would be seventy two thousand but um this direct labor number is a little more exact um, so then likewise we'll take the salary for the project architect we'll multiply it by this utilization rate and we get sixty four thousand nine hundred and three dollars and eighty five cents um architect and training times the utilization rate we're going to get forty two thousand six hundred and forty four dollars and twenty three cents um, and then it would be the same down here since these two architect and trainings are making the same amount and build out the same amount of hours and then lastly, for our administrative staff, um, we take that 30,000 times 0 0.06, and we get uh, $1,730.77. Um, so now that we have all of these numbers, we know um, of that principal's $100,000 salary, um, since they build out 72% of their time. That means that the firm paid that principal $72,115 100, or $72,115.38 uh, to essentially make them money. And then since the other um, 0.28% or 28%, 0 0.28% um, percent of the principal's time was not two billable things, that is going to be indirect labor um, that needs to be covered in the overhead of the firm. So if we add up all of these direct labor costs for the year, um, we get a grand total of $224,038.46. Um, Right, so that's the total cost to the firm. So you take the salary times the utilization rate, get each individual's direct labor cost, and then add them all up and you get $224,038.46. All right. I think we need to raise that architect and training's util utilization rate, man. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yeah, 15%, yeah, get it back up to like 0.95, something like that. Um, all right, so uh, why is it important to understand this direct labor cost? So why is it important to understand what the firm is paying internally to its employees uh, to make them money? Um, so is it A, uh, the firm's overhead rate cannot be correctly calculated without understanding how much is being paid out to employees for direct labor, or B, the direct labor cost directly sets the billable rate for each employee. C, without the direct labor cost, you cannot calculate the indirect labor cost. Or D, direct labor cost is the same as net revenue. So, um, 
in this case, uh, our answer here is going to be A. And uh, there's some other, there's, um, I would say D is almost correct, but not quite. Um, so, uh, or excuse me, um, that's not what I meant. I, uh, B, B is almost correct, but not quite. Um, so we're getting closer to understanding billable rates for each employee. Um, so since direct labor is about the cost uh, incurred by the firm, um, the direct labor is partially responsible for understanding that billable rate, but it doesn't get us all the way there. Um, C, without the direct labor costs, you cannot calculate the indirect labor costs. This isn't exactly true. Um, there are other ways that you could uh, you could calculate indirect labor costs um, besides starting with the direct labor and uh, subtracting it from the total amount you're paying in labor. Um, and then D, direct labor costs is the same as net revenue. That's um, just uh, not correct. All right. Um, so here we're going to get into indirect labor. So this is the other side of the coin from direct labor. Um, so here we have um, that number that we just figured out, $224,038.46, which is the total amount the firm paid out to its employees um, for time that they were uh, working to make the firm money. Um, so the indirect labor is going to be the opposite of that. So how much money did the firm pay to its employees um, for work that was not directly making the firm money, wasn't bringing money back into the firm? Um, so in order to figure this out, um, what we need to do is we need to figure out, okay, what did the firm pay total in labor? Um, so if we add up all of these uh, salaries, if we add them all together, um, we're going to get a total of $305,000. So the firm paid $305,000 in salaries for the year. And then um, we need to take this number and we need to subtract the direct labor in order to find the indirect labor. So if we do that, $305,000 and we subtract the 224,038.46, and I'll put, um, you're going to be left with uh, 80,961 dollars and 54 cents. So that means that um, while the firm paid out this $224,038.46 to its employees while they were making the firm money. Um, the firm also had to pay out $80,961.54 to its employees in the form of salary uh, for time that that employee wasn't actually involved in making the firm money. Um, so uh, I hope that makes sense as the other side of the coin there. Um, so then we move on to number eight, uh, which of the following is not an indirect expense? Uh, a new coffee maker for the office, computer repair charges, product research for an ongoing project, or D, a firm manager explaining to the firm how to use a new billing software. So um, here it's going to be C. Uh, C is not an indirect expense because product research for an ongoing project, that time can be billed to that project. Um, so it is uh, going to be considered direct labor. Um, everything else here is going to be an indirect expense. So um, the new coffee maker for the office, is going to go into the, the sort of general overhead of the office. Computer repair charges will also go into that general overhead. And then a firm manager explaining to the firm how to use a new billing software, that's going to be indirect labor um, because the firm manager is taking time um, that they're pulling a salary for 
and they're doing something that's not directly making the firm money. Um, so likewise, that firm manager is explaining to the firm how to use the billing software. Uh, we would imagine that there would also be employees um, sitting, listening to that firm manager explain how to use that new billing software. So their time while they are learning to um, use this new billing software is going to also be indirect labor. And indirect labor as a whole ends up getting added to the uh, the total indirect cost um, that the firm is incurring. So indirect labor is itself an indirect expense. So understanding that um, indirect labor is an indirect expense is extremely important when you are calculating the overhead rate. Um, so the overhead rate is the total indirect expenses divided by the total direct labor cost, or I guess you could say the total indirect cost divided by the total direct labor cost. And um, in order to figure out this number, total indirect expenses, we need to add up the um, total office expenses, um, these other general indirect expenses, which like we just discussed, might be a coffee maker, might be computer repair charges, um, could be rent, could be electrical bills, things like that. Uh, and then we have to add in also the indirect labor, um, which in the last or two questions ago, uh, we figured out was $80,961.54. Um, so again, that's just the portions of the salary um, that's paid out by the firm that went to employees who weren't actually involved in something that brings money directly back in. Um, so when you add all these these up together, the 92,000, the 198,000, this 80,000, you end up with $371,711.54 total for the year in indirect expenses. Um, and so since we know that the overhead rate is the total indirect expense divided by the total direct labor cost. Um, we simply take this number here and we put it over um, our total direct labor cost that we calculated a few slides ago, 224,000. Ah, sorry about my handwriting here, 3846. And our um, our overhead rate comes out to when you divide uh, the 371 by the 224 is going to be 1.66 or 1.65 if you don't round. Um, so this overhead rate um, and the overhead rate in general as a number, um, it's really an interesting number because this is, you could also look at it as um, a dollar amount. So you could look at it as a dollar 66 cents since uh, this is essentially a ratio of um, your total indirect cost divide over your total direct labor costs where your, um, if we take this definition up here and we sort of write it a, a different way. So we have our total indirect expenses over our total direct cost. So this is a ratio where we're reducing uh, the denominator down here, this total direct labor cost, where we're reducing it down to one um, in order to look at our total indirect expense in terms of total direct labor cost. Um, so when we do that down here um, and we get this 1.66, what this means is that for every $1 the firm paid to its employees uh, in direct labor, the firm incurred $1.66 of additional cost um, in order to keep that employee in their chair um, in front of a computer with the uh, lights on and the office rent paid. Um, so uh, overhead rate, is a ratio where we're looking at the total indirect expense uh, in in terms of total direct labor costs. Um, 
Mark, does that make sense? Is that I think that's of all the things today, I think that's the the biggest one to take home is the yeah. overhead rate and how how that works. Yeah, and I think um, just to say a couple of things back to you to make sure that uh, I'm hearing it right and then everybody else is hearing it right. Um, uh, that's why. So when you're uh, when you're working at a firm, and you know most architects and most firms are have to track their hours, uh, and you have to track your hours uh, to a specific project. And you know in most firms, especially if you're a younger architect, um, they're trying to uh, you know if you were working forty like forty point zero hours on your project and you weren't doing anything else except let's say you know drawing construction documents for 40 hours then your utilization rate would be 100 percent, which would mean all of your time um is being paid for directly um you know by your client but in a lot of cases as you guys know right um you know you have a team meeting uh, or you have like a whole office meeting well that's not that's not that's not for your specific project maybe you have a uh you know you have a um you know, a learning session, uh, or maybe you, um, you know, you're working on, uh, what's an example? Um, you know, maybe you're training uh, someone how to use Revit or something like that. Like that's probably not attributable to a specific project. So it starts to kind of reduce the amount of, let's say efficiency uh, uh, or utilization uh, that the firm is, uh, let's say receiving from the time that you're spending. So right. uh, when you're running a firm, you know, you want folks utilization rates to be really high. And what's always kind of funny is, you know, when you're a young architect, you know, your project manager is usually pushing you to to, to be above 80% utilization rate or, um, whereas when you're a principal, uh, you know, your utilization rates are a lot less because a lot of principals are out there trying to, trying to get work. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're spending a lot of time doing presentations or proposals, which, uh, you know, oftentimes that work isn't paid for. Um, so I guess that's one thing that sort of strikes me, I guess. Uh, and then the second is just, um, you guys can see in this uh, indirect expenses, right? So the cost of the office, the cost of your computer, the cost of your Revit subscription, all of that stuff, those are the, those are the other expenses that the company basically has to pay for in order for you to do your work. Um, and so what's cool about this ratio is it's a ratio that helps, helps you sort of look at a business and say like, all right, how are, how are things going? Like, could we, you know, in order to improve our overhead rate, could we reduce our indirect expenses or could we improve our utilization rate among our team? Um, so it, it's a sort of a financial metric or a performance metric that helps firms navigate, um, you know, the, the operations of their business. Uh, how did I do there, Paul? Did I pass? That's great. Yeah, that's, that's a, a great summary. And I think um, just also adding into that, that, um, when you're talking about principals that are out doing, uh, you know, trying to get work or are writing proposals for work, um, that they're not getting, like you said, directly paid because they're not billing their time out that, th that then is coming back, you know, as um, checks from the client. You're not going to be getting a check for uh, writing a proposal to a new client. So that's why you need to track all of that time as indirect labor so that you can add it into the just general cost, the general overhead of the firm um, in order to make sure that uh, it is being covered at some point. So we take this overhead rate um, and with it, we can figure out the break-even rate. And once we know our break-even rate, um, we can then set our billable rate. So um, Tracking your indirect labor and including it within uh, those indirect expenses will, will, in the long run, I guess, um, get you paid, if that makes sense. Yep. And I also remember, just going back to my days, uh, I, I, don't, I haven't been practicing for a while, but uh, back to my days practicing, um, I remember when we would have, um, we uh, every once in a while, the office would sort of agree to do a design competition. And the financial uh, impact of doing a design competition is pretty severe because mm -hmm. most design competitions you're not getting paid, so there is no there is no direct labor because you're not getting paid for the work. Um, right. So you know, you'd have three or four people working. You guys know when it's design competition time, it's not 40 hours a week; it's 60, 70 hours a week, um, mm -hmm. and the firm is essentially not getting paid uh, to do any of that work. So it's it's having an impact on the overhead rate of the whole company. Um, which is why when I was at Gensler, 
you know, there was always, you know, an interest in doing that kind of work, but always, you know, some consideration of like, okay, trying to minimize the impact, uh, the negative impact that would have on the financial performance of the company. Right. Um, Paul, was there any more that you wanted to do here? Um, yeah. So we have one final, one final question. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so it is, what could a high overhead rate indicate? Um, and so A, the firm operates in a location with a high cost of living. Um, B, the firm is spending too much on indirect expenses. Uh, C, the firm will have a low profit margin this year. Or um, lastly, answers A and C. Um, so here the correct answer is going to be A. Uh, and this can be a little counterintuitive. So say, um, you know, in our, our example before, we had this um, 1.66 as our utilization rate. But what if, um, or excuse me, not, not utilization rate, but overhead rate. Um, so what if you had an overhead rate of 3.5, which means that for every $1 you're paying out on salary, uh, you're also paying $3.50. Um, so essentially, in order to break even, you need to bring back in $4.50 uh, for every $1 that you're, you're paying out to um, your employees. So if you have such a high overhead rate, um, it might just mean that you're in a location with a high cost of living because rent is super high. So rather than, um, rather than your salaries being your largest expense, Um, excuse me, I'm about to cough. Oh, hold on one sec. No worries, man. All right, sorry, I'm back. Um, so rather than your employee salaries being your largest expense, um, here your office rent and your um, location are going to be your largest expense. And so a high overhead rate doesn't mean that your firm is doing poorly. It just means that you have um, a lot of overhead. So um hold on i need to mute again and cough one more time <laughs> no worries sorry about that i swear it's allergies i i uh <laughs> been all stuffed up i did i did make sure i gotten two tests and they're all um it is just allergies the first year i've ever considered that it might not be allergies um yeah. so anyway um this high overhead rate could just be because of where the firm is located. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean the firm is spending too much on indirect expenses. Um, so you could always bring down your overhead rate, but um, it's not 100% uh, necessary to have a profitable firm. And then lastly, the firm will have a low profit margin this year. That's not true either, so long as you have a high billable rate that's covering this high overhead rate. So, High overhead rate, um, as long as it's being covered by the the billable rate, uh, would would still be okay. All right, so that's sort of uh, that's the end of this, and then uh, Mark, I'll let you take over. Yeah, man. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, I think uh, I think we've addressed a lot of the questions that have come through. So, uh, as I mentioned, everyone will uh, will uh, post a an update to that one slide just to make sure everyone's on the same page about. Uh, about uh, the correct answer. So thank you, Paul, um, uh, for, for all of your help with this, um, uh, this uh, so let's say, sample of our virtual workshops. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. As I mentioned in our next ARE Live broadcast uh, on December 17th, we're going to be speaking with uh, a learning expert, a learning designer uh, who we've worked with, uh, who's really knowledgeable. Uh, we'll discuss the best study tactics and strategies to help you pass uh, the ARE. Uh, while focusing on some of the content and the material uh, is also is important, making sure you're using the right methods to retain that information in your brain is a really vital component to your studies. So uh, again, I, I know I've learned a ton uh, from her uh, and expect that you guys will learn a lot, uh, which will help uh, fuel uh, a lot of success for you on the ARE. So go to blackspectacles.com slash podcast to sign up. Uh, if you want to learn more about our exam prep offerings, you can go to Black Spectacles. We can try out any of the course videos. We're sharing a link about that as well. Um, and I swear we're going to uh, 
come up with a winner of our t-shirt uh, contest. That's coming up here in a second. One of my teammates is grabbing the name um, and posting it here so that I can share it with everyone. Um, and whenever I, oh yeah, so that's, um, so a Sadie, I think, Sadie.pena6. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, you are the lucky winner of a Black Spectacles t-shirt, which as Paul said, is very comfortable. <laughs> I have about 90 of them in my house. Uh, uh, my family thinks that's all I wear. Uh, but uh, in any case, we'll reach out to you via email to get your size and shipping information. Um, just a reminder for all of you who'd like to be eligible to win a shirt like that, post a question and you have about our featured topic in the community doing air, during Airy Live and we always pick out, um, uh, pick out uh, one of the folks uh, to win that t-shirt. So thanks everybody for tuning in. For those of you who are ready to start studying for the ARE right now and want access to the weekly virtual workshops we just previewed, uh, you can choose the expert membership at checkout. That's the only one uh, in which we offer the virtual workshops. So if you want virtual workshops, you're looking for the expert membership. Um, and then if you want a discount, which is uh, what I mentioned earlier, the discount is PCM1112208. YT, which will get you a 15% discount for the entire duration of your Black Spectacles ARE prep membership. And then lastly, tomorrow we'll uh, send you an email follow-up about today's live broadcast. So please let us know what you think and share any suggestions that you may have. I promise we read every word you write and use them to tune our next episodes. So thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.